Come ride the little train that is rolling down the tracks to the junction. Forget about your cares, it is time to relax at the junction. Lots of curves, you bet, and even more when you get to the junction. Petticoat Junction. There's a little hotel called the Shady Rest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. It is run by Kate. Come and be her guest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. And that's Uncle Joe. He's a moving kind of slow at the junction. Petticoat Junction. Well, I hate to leave, but I have to go back upstate. Well, couldn't you see your way clear to just stay one more day? I can't. Not even at our special end of the tourist season bargain reduce rates? I'm sorry, Kate. <laughs> I'll move you into the bridal suite. Kate, I'm not even married. But you could pretend. I'm sorry, I have to run. My train's just about due, but thanks for everything. <laughs> I sure hope the train doesn't break down, otherwise you're gonna have to stay here a few more days. <laughs> oh, there she is. Hooray. <laughs> See you next year. Well, there goes our clientele. Who needs him? We do. He was our last link between us and money. Well, I wouldn't worry, Kate. Something will come along. Oh, I know what will come along. Bankruptcy. Another week without any customers, and we're going to be eating greens three times a day. I don't see why. We can always get credit for Sam Drucker. I can't go to Sam. We already owe him a small fortune. I can go to Sam. Borrowing money is a man's job. How big a hole are we in? Well, we have a $200 bank loan payment to meet at the end of the week. $200? That's not a hole. That's a goddamn crater. <laughs> I want you to take this locket into Pixley for me. It ought to bring a good price. Kate, you mean you want me to pawn your gold locket? You're gonna have to. I can't bear to. Kate, you've worn this next to your heart since the day you were married. Well, you better hustle along or you're gonna miss the train. Kate. And none of this nonsense about going to Sam Drucker with another sob story. Sure, Kate. Cross your heart. Sure, Kate. <laughs> Gone hunting back in three days. Dang Sam Drucker. He's out hunting canvas backs, and I'm out 200 greenbacks. Pardon me, sir. Can you possibly tell us where we are? In front of Sam Drucker's store in Hooterville. Oh, yes, they are. Good heavens, Henrietta. They dropped us off in a foreign land. What were you looking for? Madame Bovary's hideaway reducing farm. Madame Bovary's? Only one of the most exclusive reducing resorts in the entire country. Oh, yeah. Madame Bovary. I hear she's charging quite a bit these days. $200 a week per person, but it's worth it. We'll do anything if you'll only tell us how to get there. I can tell you how to get to a place that will make Madame Bovary's look like a chicken coop. Really? Have you ever heard of the Shady Rest Reducing Farm? Never. Good. Then I'll tell you about it. It so happens that just 25 miles from where we're standing is the most exclusive reducing resort in North America. The Shady Rest. The same. If the Shady Rest is so famous, why haven't we heard about it? Oh, it's too exclusive to advertise. Surely you've heard of the Shady Rest motto, your loss is our gain? <laughs> yes. Oh, yes, I think I have. <laughs> Do you think they take us in? Well, we'd sure try. We? Are you associated with the Shady Rest? Well, without me, they wouldn't be where they are today. You mean that you're in charge? I handle the business end. Kate Bradley handles the reducing end. What can we lose? Well, I'd say about uh, 20 pounds apiece. Oh, I'd love to lose 20 pounds. Oh, I'd settle for 10. Fine. And our rates are only half that of Madame Bovary. Let's go. I don't know. Uh, Madame Bovary, well, she's considered... I'll tell you what. 
If you're not satisfied, it won't cost you one penny. Now, what do you say? That sounds fair enough. It's a deal. Now, how do we get there? Oh, we're just in time. The TH and SW is here coming. TH and SW? Yeah, thin hip and slim waistline special. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's go, girls. <laughs> Bob, guess what? The cannonball stopped. Well, of course it stopped. How else can it drop off Uncle Joe? Oh, it isn't just Uncle Joe. He's bringing up enough suitcases to start a luggage store. Guess! Oh, wonderful! Run upstairs and tidy up our best rooms. I just can't wait to meet this Kate Bradley. She sounds like an amazing woman. Yeah, she's all of that. Wait till you meet her. You'd never believe she's 75 years old. 75? <laughs> My word. Well, you certainly have an isolated spot here. How did you ever find it? Well, it wasn't easy. I have never seen anything so quaint. We spared no expense to quaint it up. <laughs> Just smell that clean, fresh air. <laughs> it gives me shivers. Well, air sniffing and goosebumps is on the house, so help yourself to all you want. <laughs> Come this way, ladies. Kate, these two women just love the looks of the place. Oh, here's a little something I don't think you're going to have to part with. I sure love you, Uncle Joe. How do you do? I'm Henry Boswell of Boston, and this is Gertrude Hawley of Philadelphia. Glad to meet you. I'm Kate Bradley of Hooterville. Uh, Mrs. Bradley, H is certainly no problem to you. Oh, it's... no. It's just a matter of keeping everything in top condition. It's remarkable. Unbelievable. 75 years old. Yeah, and good for many years more. Oh, we just can't wait to get started on your program. Uh, program? Oh, yes, my daughters do sing after supper sometimes. <laughs> um, I, I better uh, go upstairs and make sure that your rooms are ready. What do you think? She is a fantastic woman, all right. If you think she's something, you should see her three old maid daughters. <laughs> No, I wouldn't ask you to do anything wrong. I guess not. Well, of course not. Ain't I been your sweet and trusted old uncle all these years? But, Uncle Joe, isn't that lying? Betty Joe, it's not lying to tell these women you're 32. You will be 32 one of these days. You're just telling the truth ahead of time. And I'm 35. And I'm 37. Well, you look good for your age. I don't know what Mom would think. Betty Joe, we're, we're doing this for your mom. Well, if we can turn the Shady Rest into a beauty factory for just one week, she can meet the payment on that loan. Okay, Uncle Joe, if you say so. Good girls. Now get in there and look well preserved. <laughs> Good heavens. Chicken and dumplings? For us? Oh, you can have all you want at Shady Rest, as long as you clean your plate. I'll go get the mashed potatoes. Think that these lovely creatures are actually in their middle 30s. <laughs> and you eat meals like this? Oh, all the time. Amazing. How do they stay so thin? After all, we are <laughs> here to reduce. <laughs> That's one of Kate's secrets. It isn't how much you eat, it's the combination that counts. Uh, have you ladies ever at uh, Turnip Greens? Never. <laughs> Forbid. Well, there's your answer. You can eat all the chicken and dumplings you want, so long as you eat some of our special homegrown turnip greens with it. Oh, must we? Well, if it works, Henrietta. Take some. <laughs> Just a minute, Mr. Carson. You eat here all the time. Why aren't you thin? Yes, how do you explain that? Ladies, you're looking at a most unfortunate soul. I'm probably the only man living who's allergic to turnip greens. Oh, here are the mashed potatoes. Would you like anything else? Just one more thing. Another bowl of these fabulous turnip greens. <laughs> more pancakes, please. 
please, Mom. Me too. Coming right up. And more sausage, too. Sorry, you're out of luck. When Uncle Joe and our two lady guests left the breakfast table, most of the sausage went with them. I'll bet our guests haven't tasted anything like your sausage. They sure haven't. Uncle Joe ate it all. What did they have? Pancakes and turnip greens. <laughs> For breakfast? That's what they wanted. <laughs> Say, Mom, what's all that racket out back? That's Uncle Joe chopping wood. Uncle Joe chopping wood? I can't get over the change in Uncle Joe this morning. Just out of habit, I said, chop some wood, paint the back fence, and do a few of the chores he's been avoiding. And listen to him out there. Going a mile a minute. <laughs> Take it easy, lady. You don't want to overdo the first day. <gasps> Gertrude, isn't this exciting? Personally, I think it's exhausting. <laughs> I've never exercised in such a, a primitive fashion before. <laughs> well, it's all part of our Back to Nature program. Ooh. You won't see none of them do-nothing gadgets around here like they have in them big cities reducing saloons. Them and their fancy bicycles, pink dumbbells, and swimming pools. They reduce your wallet, not your waistline. But doesn't it seem terribly strenuous? I used to feel that way about it, but not anymore. Do you exercise this way, too? Oh, every day. If I had another axe, I'd be going at it with you. Oh, well, we hate to deprive you of your morning exercise. Ladies, it's my pleasure. <laughs> one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one. This is fun. That's the greatest wrist thinning exercise ever invented. <laughs> one, two. Okay, ladies, that'll be enough for now. Run around the hotel a couple of times, and we'll get back to the wrist thinning exercise later this afternoon. <laughs> Joe, have you had those poor women painting the fence? Hey, I come down here this morning to do my chores, just like you asked me. And doggone, if them two didn't come along in them funny-looking clothes and take over. They asked to do your chores? <laughs> These city women sure are peculiar in some ways. <laughs> I guess I just never will understand rich folks. <laughs> I don't believe it. You two gorgeous girls can't be the two unfortunates that came dragging in here last night. Have we really changed that much? <laughs> and gotten thinner? Well, if you shrink anymore, we'll have to send you home in envelopes. <laughs> I can't believe we're losing all those pounds. Step right on here. You go first, Gertrude. Oh, Henry, and I couldn't. My heart's beating too fast. <laughs> all right. <laughs> My heavens. I've lost 12 pounds. Oh, let me try it. <laughs> Henrietta, so have I. It's unbelievable. Henrietta, let's get on with our wrist thinning exercises. <laughs> well, you ladies go ahead. I'll be with you shortly. Kate, my dear. Hold it, Uncle Shenanigans. <laughs> what was that about wrist thinning exercises? And what are you doing with the scale? Uh, I, I guess them two city women just found another strange way to exercise, and I'm taking these upstairs. Why is it while they're exercising, they just happen to be doing your work? Well, I don't ask questions. I just live and let live. <laughs> you mind sitting this one out? I've got to get these scales upstairs. All right. If I can't get a straight answer out of you, maybe one of our guests will give me one. Oh, wait a minute, Kate. I don't think you want to do that. I don't, why not? You might upset them. All right. Then you tell me the truth. I always tell you the truth. You know that, Kate. Yeah, I know that, but sometimes you twist it a little. This time, I want it straight. Let's have it. Well, I'm afraid this kind of truth is going to require a sitting position. <laughs> I'll take it standing. Well, you, you go ahead. I'm going to have to tell it sitting. <laughs> And for your part in this wild scheme, just as soon as I can afford to give them back to you again, I'm withdrawing your allowances. We're sorry, Mom. 
But we didn't want the hotel to go bankrupt. It's a lot cheaper at Shady Rest than it is at Madame Bovary's. And Uncle Joe's keeping them happy and saving the money at the same time. He couldn't bear to sell your locket. Oh, I know he meant well. But there are two ways to do things. The right way and Uncle Joe's way. <laughs> well, what are you going to do about it? Just what I told Uncle Joe. After supper, I'm going in there and tell those ladies the truth. And there'll be no more weight-reducing turnip greens. <laughs> Oh, here you are. Ladies, I'm afraid I'm the bearer of sad tidings. What's the matter? Well, Kate's at it again. Kate said what again? It happens every time. What happens? Hadn't you noticed? She's jealous of you. <laughs> jealous? Small wonder with how lovely and beautiful you're beginning to look. You know, Kate can't stand being challenged as a queen bee around you. It's getting so we can't keep customers around here anymore. What do you mean? I'm afraid she's going to try to coax you into leaving with some cock and bull story. But we were making such beautiful progress. You bet you are. That's why the old girl's starting to sizzle. She's thinking that if you stay around here any longer, you'll start to look too good. Might even stumble onto her personal miracle secret. Personal miracle secret? The way she ain't never divulged sat to her daughters when they started to wrinkle up a while back. <laughs> well, I'm not leaving here until I find out what it is. That goes for me, too. OK, don't say I didn't warn you. She's getting green with envy. She might even tell you anything. I wouldn't be surprised if she told you that this wasn't a reducing farm. She wouldn't dare. Oh, she couldn't make us swallow that story. Come on, Gertrude, let's get on with our wrist thinning. <laughs> Mrs. Boswell, Mrs. Hawley, um, I don't know how to say this, but um, I'm afraid you've been exercising under false pretenses. This isn't a reducing farm. Oh? You don't say. You see, the Shady Rest is just a plain little old country hotel. Is that a fact? And all that nonsense about me being 75 and turnip greens and everything. Did you notice I, I, I didn't have the nerve to serve them to you tonight? Yes, we noticed. And I wouldn't blame you if in the morning you checked out without paying. Oh, we don't intend to check out, Mrs. Bradley. You don't? No, we like it here just the way it is. You mean you're going to stay? Definitely. And now, if you'll excuse us, we'll have to go on up to our rooms. We're tired. Night, night. Ta-ta. Ta. -ta. Ta. <laughs> we heard it all, and they didn't even seem to mind a bit. No. You know, girls, if I live to be a hundred, I'll never understand city folk. <laughs> you have them. Wonderful. Two heaping dishes of turnip greens, freshly filled. After all that pot roast and mashed potatoes we ate, well, the plenty. <laughs> it's so good to be back on our diets. <laughs> For mom? The only button that matches the one on that dress. Oh. Maybe it has something to do with the circulation. Could be. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, as soon as I finish fixing this meal for them, we'll go see if we can find them. I sneaked a peek at her in the kitchen a moment ago. She's mixing all sorts of things in a bowl. <laughs> oh, but then, Henrietta, we may be hitting the jackpot at last. <laughs> hey, patient, honey, this will be ready in a couple of seconds. This bone meal's great for the teeth. What is that you're adding, Mom? Special vitamins to build up pep and resistance. You're right, Henrietta. This is the secret. <laughs> Mom, there isn't a living creature around here that doesn't benefit by what you know. It's taken a long time to figure out the right combination of ingredients. First, you wouldn't eat it. Then I finally found a way to make it appetizing. You sure have the secret, Mom. There, it's all set. <laughs> now, let's go out and back and see if we can find the rest of the family. 
Shall we take that along? Oh, no, leave it. They can eat in here. <laughs> oh, did she say this was appetizing? I wouldn't feed it to my cat. <laughs> Eddie Joe? Over here, Mom. <laughs> We're all waiting for supper for you, dear. Couldn't you find your school books? Oh, sure, but I found something else. The cannonball just sprung a new leak. Well, I declare it's, it's fountain steam like a tea kettle. It's the steam pipe on the air pump. I've been looking around for something to fix it. Well, it, it sounds bad. Is it serious? Not really, but I just can't bear to see the cannonball bleed like this. <laughs> I can't hear what they're saying, but it looks to me like they're breathing that steam. Yes, they are, aren't they? <laughs> Do you suppose the boiler of that locomotive is filled with water that has some kind of rare minerals in it? It's possible. And it could be that the miracle takes place when the water turns to steam. Please, Mom, please. All right, Betty Jo, you can use the clamp off the garden hose to fix it. But after supper, Floyd and Charlie are starving. Come on, let's go. Thanks, Mom. The new pipe's rusting out awful fast. It's no wonder with the hard water we got around here. Come on. It sure does have an effect, doesn't it? Well, it's so chock full of minerals. Now, when it's heated and you put pressure on it, it never fails. You're right. It's the water that does it every time. <laughs> well, Henrietta, <laughs> shall we? My dear, we've tried Swedish steam and turkey steam and Finnish steam, but now for the greatest steam of all, the Kate Bradley miracle steam of you. Oh, Henrietta, oh. this is this exciting. Oh, divine. <laughs> Ladies, don't tell me you're leaving. Yes, it's time we went home, Mr. Carson. Well, I guess all good things have to come to an end. You ain't got no idea what staying at the Shady Rest has done for you. Oh, yes, we have. Indeed. You look years younger, both of you. And we feel younger, Mr. Carson. That's because we learned Mrs. Bradley's secret. You what? You did? <laughs> oh, oh, girls, girls, would you get the ladies' baggage down to the tracks? We did learn your secret, Mrs. Bradley. My secret? Just a minute, Mr. Carson. Come here. You're very much involved in this, you know. Mrs. Bradley, we've been following you for days, from the rooster's first crow to the time you go to bed. And we know your secret. I don't know what you mean. What secret? What keeps you young and attractive? Ladies, why don't we just forget the whole thing? Your secret, Mrs. Bradley, is hard work. We have never seen anyone tackle work the way you do. You're incredible. You're not 75 years old like this old rascal would have us believe. But you're still an incredible woman. Old maid daughters in their 30s don't usually go to high school, do they, Mr. Carson? Well, ordinarily, no. But these girls didn't take up book learning until they You were... old rogue, you tricked us, didn't you? Now admit it. Well, now, ladies, there's two ways to look at that. You see, Uncle I, I, Joe. Okay, I admit it. I'm sorry, ladies. I am, too. And you don't owe us a penny for staying here. Don't be silly. We had a wonderful time. We've been on so many diets for the last six months. Eating again was heavenly. Your food, Mrs. Bradley, is fabulous. I know, but it's, it's, it's not fair for you to pay. You came here to take off weight. Well, we can do that horrible thing at Madame Bovary's. Let's go, Gertrude. Goodbye, Mrs. Bradley. <laughs> Mr. Carson. <laughs> <laughs> goodbye, ladies, and thank you. Yeah, thanks a million, ladies. And goodbye. Goodbye, you old rascal. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it worked out pretty good after all. Only because they were such nice ladies. What would you have done if they hadn't paid for staying here? I wasn't worried. You see, I just got word Sam Drucker's back from his hunting trip. <laughs>
Junction. This has been a Filmways presentation.